Hello biology students! We're going to continue talking about energy through the environment and now we're going to learn about oops, trophic levels and ecological pyramids. This is still in theme one about energy. We're in topic one, ecology, and this is our page two of notes. Make sure you're titling and dating things in your spiral, which you should have by now. Let's begin. Our first Roman numeral, which we're going to write and underline the whole title at the top to keep our outline notes organized, is let's define a trophic level because that's a new vocabulary word. And let's list examples. So this new vocab word, which I haven't read, which you should probably box and highlight, is trophic level. They are the feeding steps in a food chain or web. But what do I mean? Well, let's give some examples help us. The first level is producers. Let's say a plant. That's a word we've already learned last class. Now in our food chain last class, the next thing that was eaten by the plant grass was a consumer, specifically a snail was eating the grass. And we're going to call it primary. What's the word primary mean? It means first. Now I know this says second and that's because it's the second organism after plant, right? but it's the first consumer. Now, what ate the snail last class? We had a grass, then a snail, and then a bird. And the bird was also a consumer, but we're gonna call it a secondary consumer because it's the second thing to eat. What do you think is gonna come next? Producer or consumer? Definitely consumer, right? Something that could have eat, eaten the bird. Could have been a human, maybe, perhaps. Um, and we call that tertiary, meaning the third level consumer. So we just went over that from last class's notes. So if you have been keeping your notes organized in a spiral like you should, you can add these words, pause, and put them into that diagram from before. Okay, let's keep going. Now what we're learning today is this next thing in Roman numeral number two, which we'll underline, list three types of ecological pyramids. We're gonna be talking about energy pyramids. We're gonna be talking about pyramids about population size, how many organisms, which we'll call numbers, and also pyramids of biomass, which is the weight, the dry weight of the organisms in the area we're looking at. And when we talk about these, we actually are talking about visual pyramids that scientists are using to discuss how the environment is going, how the organisms are interacting. And the first pyramid we're going to look at is the energy pyramid. So in our next Roman numeral, we'll write, state how much energy moves up the energy pyramid. Well, let's look at the energy pyramid. Our energy here is in the units kilocalories which is like the calories actually that you would see on a nutrition label if you were eating some food. And the first level are producers, grass, it says a thousand calories, kilocalories. The next level that eats them only has a hundred. What's the difference in percentages? How much has moved up? 10%. And now the things that ate these insects, the secondary consumers, there's 10. What's the difference here? 10 is what percentage of 100? 10% again, so how much energy moves up? What percentage? You got it, 10% of the energy is transferred between each of these different levels. Only 10% of the energy from grass makes it to the insects, and 10% of the energy from the insects makes it to these rodents and so forth. Where does the other energy go? Well, the other energy is being used to do work, running around, doing exercise, peeing, pooping, you know it. All right, we kind of categorize that as lost as work or heat, okay? Think about when you're running, you're giving off heat, right? 90% is lost, doesn't go into no man's land, it's just not eaten, right? Okay, next one. Explain which trophic level has the largest population size. Well, let's look at this diagram. This is our pyramid of numbers. Which trophic level, the producers or one of the consumers, is the largest? Just looking at the diagram. I don't even need to know much about this other than looking at the diagram. Which one seems the widest? The grass seems the widest. Actually, if I look at the numbers, this says 10,000 organisms of grass versus only 10 mice versus only one top carnivore bird. 
And that's exactly right. The lower trophic levels, specifically the producers, have the most numbers. Why? Because they have to support the food web by having a lot of them so the upper organisms will have enough food. Right? Because we know from the previous slide that a lot of energy gets lost. Only 10% moves on. And actually, that 10% is the same here. Only 10% of the size of the population approximately makes it to the higher trophic level, sometimes even less. Okay, next one, biomass, which we learned was kind of like weight. Which trophic level has the most biomass? Following the same pattern, which one seems to have the most biomass? Let's look at these diagrams again. Hmm, is it the grasshoppers? No, that's on a thousand. This is even getting smaller. A hundred frogs. Oh, ten thousand. This is much wider, right? Which one's the, the largest? Most biomass? Looks like the producers again. I'm seeing a pattern. Why is this? Well, 90% of the biomass is being used as work, just like energy. So how much is actually moving up the food chain? That other percentage I keep hearing. What was it? What was it? It was 10%, right? Again, the producers have the most, whether it was biomass, energy, or numbers. Producers seem to have the biggest part of these pyramids. That's why it's a pyramid structure. Only 10% moves on. So let's summarize our thinking. In this last Roman numeral, Roman numeral number six, state the percent energy, numbers, and biomass that is always moving on to the next level. There was this pattern, right? We want this pattern to be highlighted nice and big. 10% moves on to the next level, right? And there was that pattern. Why? Why, why was it only 10%? Well, because the numbers, the energy, and the biomass, 90% of it was lost due to work or heat, just for those organisms to live and survive, right? Which is why, what thing was always the largest in the pyramid? It was always the producers, and that's the pattern. We will actually be building and talking about pyramids when we come back together in person, when you next see me, but I wanna congratulate you on doing one of your first notes alone good good job i want to see and i'm going to be checking that you kept this outline structure that you've gone and you highlighted the important things so they pop out and that you can study them i'm really proud of you all right see you guys next time